We continue with Yang Shen. This time we deal, we discuss compliance. The greatest chance of relieving and preventing the recurrence of a disorder in a patient exists when the person actively participates and cooperates in their treatment by making relevant changes in their diet and lifestyle. In order to get the patient to assist in their treatment, it is important to explain to the patient which patterns of imbalance they have and how these patterns may have a reason. Then you can tell them what they can do to help promote the healing process. Most patients are interested in making relevant changes, especially when they can see a logic in the advice they are given. When explaining to patients which patterns of imbalance they have and how these have a reason, it is, of course, important to explain these concepts so they are understandable to a layman who has not had a three-year training as an acupuncturist. As well as there being differences in what advice you would give to each individual patient, there are also differences in how to present this advice to different people, especially in relation to the amount and, and the extent of the changes that they should make. All of this will, of course, depend upon the patient's patterns of imbalance. Some clients will get overwhelmed or give up if you give them too much information and too much advice in one go. Others can accommodate more and will be more motivated to change their habits and diet. It is often a case of suggesting small, realistic changes. It is difficult enough to change long-term habits in general, but this is even more complicated with regards to the diet. This is because there are so many factors that come into play in relation to why we eat, what we eat, and how we eat it. For some, the situation is further complicated by the fact that they are not fully in control of what they eat. This may be because they eat in the canteen at work, share their meals with others, or frequently have to eat out. Implementing 75% changes that are maintained for weeks, months or years is often not only more realistic, but also more beneficial than making a 100% change for 14 days or three weeks, only to return to the original diet because the dietary changes were too hard to maintain. It is hoped that when the patient makes relevant changes in their diet, they will experience an improvement in their symptoms. Often they will also experience a deterioration of their symptoms when they eat at some point, do eat what is detrimental for them. This will in itself create a motivation to continue with the dietary changes. It will also result in a completely different chi dynamic. They will no longer experience the dietary changes as a set of rules and restrictions dictated by their therapist, something that may cause their liver chi to stagnate and prevent them from consuming things that give them pleasure, that is nourishing their heart. Now they begin to experience motivation. They, for example, no longer want to eat wheat and cheese because this will result in a state of discomfort and they feel better when they don't. This motivation will have a completely different effect on their chi to a perceived ban. It may even end up benefiting their heart because they now feel that they are doing something that is good for them and are taking care of themselves, which makes them happy, thereby nourishing their heart chi. It is not enormously important that our advice does not become an ideological factor in their imbalances. This is especially important when they do not live up to their own expectations and their perceptions of our expectations. This can result in feelings of guilt and a lack of self-esteem, which will have a negative impact on their liver and heart chi. Undergoing a course of treatment, any treatment that involves having to make changes in your diet and lifestyle habits, is something all therapists should try. It helps to create a sense of understanding when a client has difficulty conforming to the advice we give them. We sometimes share with the clients our own experiences and failings as a client of others. It can be a relief for them and their conscience to know that we are not different from them. It also helps to bring us down from the pedestal that they often have put us up upon. There are though other types of clients who benefit from a more stern approach where you are more strict and give them little leeway, either because of the severity of their condition or because of the type of person that they are. This means that we must constantly adjust our approach from client to client, sometimes being strict, sometimes being understanding and accommodating, sometimes being humorous, and sometimes being stern. The severity of the patient's condition will usually be a significant factor. A person who has a slight aching in their lower back will probably be less motivated to make major changes in their life than someone who has just been diagnosed with a serious heart problem. The verbal strategies you 
that you utilize in all these situations will depend on your own character and temperament, as well as that of your client. We do not think that there are any hard and fast rules of how to get clients to comply with therapeutic recommendations, and each situation must be tackled individually. In general, it is best to dose your advice and only give the patient new challenges once they have impl implemented the previous ones. Thank you for your attention.